No. Congratulations for deciding to do your first half marathon. My name is Sarah Davis, and I'm here to kind of help get you started so that you can be prepared to do your first half marathon. One of the ultimate secrets is, is that first of all, you're going to dream that you can do it. Then you're going to train to do it, and then you're going to achieve it. And it really is simple to do. Now, the biggest thing you have to remember when you're doing half marathon is you have to train for it. And typically, it's 24 to 26 weeks out from your first event that you're going to start training for it. Now, why do you want to train for it? To make it simple on yourself. Because we don't get up and we just don't start bike riding or we don't start driving. We have to practice, practice, and more practice. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What are the steps that you need to do in order to practice to be more successful with it? My first recommendation to you is going to be to find a good training group. This is a group of people that meet once or sometimes twice a week to go ahead and practice to get in the routine. And then the greatest thing is in race day you have a team of people who you've been preparing with, who you're practicing with, who are on your same pace, who you're going to feel so comfortable with. Now with the training group, they're also going to be giving you homework or additional things to do on your own. Typically you're going to be training four times a week. Um, Keep an exercise log. You want to be honest. You want to be able to see where your successes are. You want to be able to celebrate your mileage. And God forbid, if you get injured, you want to see if there's anything that you were doing in order to injure yourself. Sometimes people will injure themselves because they're being so fast and so uh, in a hurry to go ahead and get things done. They don't realize that their speed could be a factor for injury. One of the things you're going to want to do is start slowly but surely. Now, when you're in a training group, you're going to have one day a week a long run. Once again, we're in the practice mode with this. You're going to want to go ahead and pretend that it is the race day or the night before the race, the day before your big run with the training group. So what you're going to do is lay out all of your clothes. In addition to that, you're going to pack a bag. In your bag, you're going to have a change of clothes because all of us sweat after we run with your shirt, with your shorts, with your socks. So let me put that in my bag. You're going to want to have a pair of shoes. Usually if you do over 8 to 10 miles, you're going to want open air shoes to let your toes breathe because your feet will be sweating. You're going to want to have your water satchel of what you're going to carry because you want to be sure to stay well hydrated during the practice. Of course, you're going to want to have a bottle of water. If you're doing over 6 to 8 miles, you may choose to use an energy supplement couple that I have here, you can either use goo or you can use slip. Once again, we're in the preparation mode. You don't want to try these for the first time on race day. You want to go ahead and have these as part of your regular agenda and part of your regular routine. The other thing you may decide you want is a sports watch. So you can go ahead and track your distance and automatically keep your lock. So at this point, we have our bags all set to go to the training group. Other things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be sure to hydrate. Drinking water is so critical, not only while you're exercising and running, but also before and after the race. Before the race, you typically want to hydrate three to five days in advance. So that way you've got the water going through your body and you don't, I'm in South Florida, and you don't get that South Florida heat for wherever you are. You just want to make sure that you're very well hydrated. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure you go to bed early before the training event. So that way you're comfortable with that. Um, let's see, other things you're going to want to do is anytime you do over 10 miles, you're going to want to be able to carve up the night before. One of the few times in your life you can eat carbohydrates without guilt. The rule of thumb is if you're doing over 10 miles, you want 1.5 grams of carbohydrates for every 10 pounds that you weigh for your meal beforehand. And then finally, ultimately, don't cheat yourself. If you're keeping inflammation in your log, make sure that you're following what you're supposed to do, make sure you're following your training plan, because at the end of the day, the only person you'd be cheating is yourself. Now we get to the fun-filled race time. You're all set with as far as getting up, being able to pack your gear, being able to be comfortable with the race. At that point, you'll be able to get up, meet with your group, follow your race plan as far as what you're going to do, and then at the end of the race, you'll be able to celebrate and get your medals. Congratulations on your thought of doing a half marathon. Please take the time to practice, to dream, and then to find your achieve. Thank you so much. Okay.